Okay, we have here today a pretty interesting challenge. What I need to do is derive the complex definition for arctan of x. Okay, so to get started with this, before we can even get to arctan, I think we need to look at what makes up tangent, which is just sine and cosine. And for that, I'm going to need Euler's formula. Okay, so we have here Euler's formula. And what I'm going to do here, this is going to help us out a lot. But what I also want to do is look at e to the minus ix. And I can write that as, I can write it this way. So we can input the minus x into this formula. So just plugging in here, we're going to have cosine minus x plus i sine minus x. But then we'll use the fact that cosine is an even function, so that's just going to become a plus. And then sine is an odd function, so we can take our minus sine out front. But just with this here, it's going to help us out quite a bit, because what I can do is just add these two equations together. When I do that, the i sine of x's are going to cancel, and we're just going to end up with, on the right side, 2 cosine x. Over here we have eix plus e minus ix, but then I can just divide a two on both sides like this, the twos cancel. And so that's gonna give us our complex definition for cosine. Then doing something really similar, what I could do is subtract these equations. So if I subtract from eix, I'll subtract e minus ix. Well, now the cosines are gonna cancel because we're subtracting this second one. This is gonna to turn to a plus and we end up with two i sine x. But then all I need to do is divide by 2i on both sides. And this is going to give us our complex definition for sine. But now the reason that I found my complex definition for cosine and sine is because I want to get to the definition for tangent. But tan of x is the same thing as sine x over cosine x. And then I can just use these formulas that we just found and just kind of plug in. So we're going to have eix minus e minus ix over Sorry, I forgot my i there in that definition. So that should be a 2i. And then we're dividing our cosine definition. Now I can cancel the twos in this. And then just with a little rearranging, when we divide this, this is gonna come into the denominator here. And we're gonna end up with eix minus e minus ix. We'll bring an i out front here and we'll have eix plus this piece, e minus ix. And so now this here is gonna be our complex definition for tangent. Okay, now we're making progress because we've got our tangent, but just keep in mind our goal is to get this. Our goal is going to be to get arctan. Well, what I can do here on our definition for tangent is I can just set this equal to y. And then to get an inverse, what we're going to do is we can reverse the variables here. I can, wherever we see an x, I can make this a y and bring an x out here. And then just by solving for y, that's going to give us our inverse. So let me just rewrite this piece with the variable swapped. Okay, now working with this equation here, we're just going to need to do a whole bunch of algebra in order to isolate our y when we have it in these four different terms. So for my first step, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to multiply by i on both sides just to cancel this off. And then from here, I don't really like having the y in four terms. Well, I can kind of fix that or make some progress by multiplying by eiy over eyy. Then just distributing these in in the numerator and denominator, we're going to have our ix over here on the left side still. This is going to become e2iy. When you multiply eiy times e minus iy, this becomes e to the zero or just one. Then really similar in the denominator, we still have, we're still we gonna have e2iy here, and this is gonna become plus one. But again, I really wanna get this down to just one y term. So what I can do here, I can make this minus into a plus, but I just changed it. So what I can do is subtract the two off so that we still have, this is still minus one right here. And I'm doing that because then this piece is just one right here. So what I can do is take this minus two and we'll separate it off here into a separate term with the same denominator. But now again, this term here is just gonna be one. So if I just subtract one on both sides of this equation, on the left side, I'm gonna have ix minus one. And over here, we're just gonna have minus two e two i y plus one. Now with this minus sign, I'm basically just gonna multiply by minus one on both sides. So that's gonna turn this to a plus or just this will go away and this will reverse the sign over here on the left side. So from here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take the reciprocal on both sides and reorder this. So we're going to end up, this is this here is going to become e2iy plus 1 over 2. And then this I'm going to write as 1 over, because we're taking the reciprocal, 1 over 1 minus ix. But then I can multiply by 2 on both sides. So this is going to cancel with this here. And then I can subtract 1 from both sides. So that way, this term is going to go away. So on the left side, we're going to have e2iy, but I'm actually going to rewrite this as eiy squared, which is the same thing as e2iy. Then here, multiplying 1 times 2, we're going to have 2 in the numerator, 
one minus ix. For this minus one, I'm gonna actually write it as one minus ix over one minus ix. I wanna get a common denominator so I can kind of simplify this a little bit more. So with the common denominator, we'll just distribute in this minus sign. We're gonna have our denominator of one minus ix. This is gonna become two minus one or just one. Distributing minus times minus is a plus ix. But then from here, I'll just take the square root on both sides. Then what's gonna happen is the square root's gonna essentially cancel with this two here. Normally we want an absolute value, but we don't have to worry about it because this is a complex number. And so I'm just gonna clean up the board and we'll continue with what we have right here. Okay, so continuing from where we left off, again, my goal is just to isolate this y and we're getting really close. What I can do from here is we have a e over here on the left. I'll take natural log on both sides, take natural log here, but then essentially we could take the i, y out front and natural log of e is just gonna be one. So on my left side, I'm gonna end up with just i times y. For this expression, we can look at this as like a half exponent and bring the exponent out front. So I can actually write this as one half natural log one plus ix over one minus ix. And then just to isolate y, I can multiply by minus i on both sides because i times i is minus one times a minus is a plus. So this is just one here. So now we have y alone on the left side. But one thing I wanna do, I'm just gonna take this minus sign. I'm just gonna use the minus sign to take the reciprocal because I can bring the minus into the exponent and flip this fraction and write it as one minus ix over one plus ix. And I think I'll just reorder this and write this as one half i right here. And now we've got a value for our y, but remember y is we reverse the variables back here. Y is just arctan of x. And so for our complex definition of arctan of x, we've got just half i natural log one minus ix over one plus ix, and that's it. Okay, so that's it. We'll stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.